go away. <laughs> um, are we ready? Yeah, we are. We're oh, on. Great. <laughs> um, hi, we're here with Aunt Quilting in the Valley, and we're going to do another video going over our embroidery machine. Um, we've got the machine set up. We've got the feed dogs are down. We have our 26 foot on. We've highlighted our 26 foot to make sure that that's that's saying that that foot is on. We have a zero millimeter plate in, and I've set, attached my embroidery unit, and I've set on my table. Um, but there are a couple things that we need to um, kind of make right because we didn't we didn't tell you the right thing on some of the in the setting area. So we're going to go into settings, and I'm going to push this button right there. And then I'm going to push this button right there. And this is the one that we kind of went, hmm, I don't know what that's for. Well, what this is for is it's telling you the thicknesses of the thickness of your fabric. So normally you're you're going to be able to do most everything with this four millimeter. Then you go up to 7.5 millimeter or a 10 millimeter, and that is for thicknesses of the of what you are doing. So like a towel, possibly, that has a high pile to it, you might want to put it up to a 7.5 millimeter. Um, you know, there, there might be minky or something that you want to change. Now, in order to know that that's going to write, stitch out right for you, you are going to have to do a sample and just see how that works for you. You'll find that it, embroidery is not something that you're just going to go in and do it. Most of the time you want to do some form of a sample, making sure that that design is good. Um, and so now today, uh, there's one more place that we need to go, and that's right here. What this is, is that when your machine, when your embroidery opens up to a design, it will automatically center it. And, and it'll be, that design is going to be the center area. If you don't want it to do that, then what you're going to do is you're going to touch this and it's going to end up in a, the lower right quadrant of your design that particular one. yep like this like this one here so if your design showed it in the lower left hand corner right then it would stay there then it would go there the left, wherever yeah. wherever that design is other than center where it's going to start that's where it's going to show cool. okay so those are the two areas that we were a little confused well, on. we just plain forgot that one yeah <laughs> so i'm going to close out of here because we have set up all of that. Now what I wanna show you is hooping. So we're going to do just a basic design again today. We're going to do, I have chosen a design, we'll, and I will go in, let's go back in here and I'll show you what, how I did that. So I'm gonna go back here. This is the, oh, the opening screen that you're, um, when you open up embroidery, that it's going to come to. So I'm going to touch here, which is all, the, all of these are different folders. I picked this one because it is a fairly simple design and it will stitch out fairly fast. So it's that simple. My design is in there right now. It's telling me over on the left-hand side that the o the oval hoop is the one that it chose for this design. So it basically tells you the, the hoop size that you need. Um, if I go in, in over, do you want to go, did you say go over some of the? No, no, no we're not gonna do that, Just okay. Simple. So here is your design. So. We're ready to go, basically. I, I have it threaded. I put in blue thread. You might talk about what's on the screen. Okay. Um, th this is your design that it shows. Um, I can, this is your information. So if I touch here, it's going to open up all of the editing things that I need to do. We're not going to do that And we're not time. doing it, right? We'll do it next time. Uh, this is showing the design, and this is where I can add 
another design if I wanted to add one in here. Okay. And then, and then this is telling you it's going to take four minutes. I can tell you that it will take longer. And then it tells you also the inch, the size of that design, which says here four by four, 4 4.4 by 2.4 inches. Which would be different if we had chosen millimeters in right. the settings. Right, right. And what about the magnifying glass in the lower left? The magnifying corner? is that you can touch that, and do you see how that, it's magnified it. And then to get back? I can touch it and just go back. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, on this right here, this, of course, this is your folder um, where you would touch to go back into being able to choose your folders. This is your editing. This is a, where you can go in and choose a color. Like we, we have Isocord, but there's also um, Floriani in there. You can choose and set up your machine to do the color, the type of thread you're using and the colors. And then this, of course, is our stitch out okay. button, okay? So now I'm gonna show you how to, um, how to hoop. Now you have two hoops. You have an outer hoop and you have an inner hoop. The outer hoop is going to lay under the, and you're going to, this is going to be to the left and your uh, screw is going to be to the right, bottom right. You're going to lay your stabilizer right on top of that. And then you're going to lay your fabric set that down right on top of that now you're going to do um, you're going to mark your center so that you know where you want that set up on the outer the inner hoop there is an arrow at the very bottom that lines up with the bottom arrow on your outer hoop it also has center this is your center marks, and this is where you could you can line up. So I can, I could actually move this, and let's say this was my center. I can just sit there and push and line that line up with those. Remember, we also have grids, and I think the grid is right over there. Um, we are going to loosen our hoop quite we're gonna have it so that it's pretty open, if you can see there. Because you don't want to have to put in the inner hoop and it shouldn't be a, scr a struggle to put it in. So now I can, I, if I had those clips on, there's clips that go on here, I could basically line my design right up here with that as my center and I can just push this in. Do you see how easy that pushed in? Then I could come under here and I'm gonna tighten that right back up. Okay. I am going to kind of go, when I'm not gonna tighten it all the way. You never, you don't want to pull on this much because what you'll do is you'll take it out of, out of, off a of grain, and then your design isn't going to be centered like you want it. But I'm going to now, if you look at this, do you see how the, the hoop is kind of standing out from the, from the, your stabilizer? When you leave it like this, what happens is that it etches the design after a time into your stitch plate here. So what you want to do is you want to countersink this embroidery and just countersink it a little bit all the way around. Now if you look, I have a small, it's, it is the stabilizer that's going to hit my machine, not the plastic. So you have less chance of it etching in. Also, by putting on my table, that helps me not to have that sitting right on top of that and etching in. 
So then the next thing that you're going to do, this is all hooped, ready to go. You're going to come over here and you're going to push the needle right there. And what that's going to do is it's setting up your machine to accept the hoop and it'll tell you. Now, now go ahead and put the hoop on. So I'm going to go in, I'm going to put the hoop on. And how you do that is you push these two knobs on the hoop in, holding them in and then setting it down on to the, to the arm. Okay, then it's gonna say, well, are you ready? Yeah, so I'm gonna do a check. Then I'm gonna make sure that my fabric is all laying straight, that I don't have it tucked under, because I can tell you how many times people have <laughs> done a design and, and the fabric was tucked under and they were embroidering on all of it, the whole layers. So you don't wanna do that, you're just gonna make sure that it's smooth. Now you can do a couple things. And I, I like to do this up here. This is a basting box. And I like to put a basting box around where my design is going to be. Because for one thing, what it does is it helps stabilize that area where I am, where I'm stitching. The second thing is, is that um, what I like to do is make sure that I am, um, let me see where, yeah, I don't want to have the rabbit on because with the rabbit, it will go at a top speed. But Bernina has set up the machine really to slow down and speed up when it needs to. And so when you push that rabbit to go the fastest that it can, you're overriding what the machine actually thinks it should be doing. And so I, I don't use that at all. Um, this little, this is going to, if I highlight that, it cuts the thread between the different colors. Let's go down here. This one here, if I touch that, what that is, is that's where I can go back if my thread breaks or I want to restitch over something that was stitched, I can hit that and I can look to see. Right now, my this is right at the center. But let's say I had, we had stitched and that far my thread broke. I can, I can be in here, now I can look at this and I can move this right back and I can go stitch by stitch like that and now we're right back there so which is your beginning if i turn the the um width knob to the left it moves the design um backwards one to ten stitches if i move the stitch width knob to the right it moves it forward one to ten the same thing is with the stitch length knob. If I move it, turn it to the left, it's going to move it backwards up to 100 stitches. If I move it to the right, it's going to move it forwards up to 100 stitches. So that's how you can move back and forth if your thread breaks. And I'll guarantee you there's going to be a time when your thread will break. And you just can't get worried about that. Another thing that you can, when you see where your thread, when your thread broke, if you look here, right here at these numbers, that's the amount of stitches. There's 15 stitches right now, supposedly stitched out of 2401. And so if you kind of keep an eye on that and write it down when that thread breaks, you'll know where you were when the thread broke or where, where you were when it ended, but then you can back it up and kind of have an idea of where you are, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to start stitching. We can just leave that there, it'll start back 
and I'm going to push the green button. Okay, it's telling me to put this back on, so we will. There we go. All right. So now we're right here. And I'm going to just go ahead and start stitching the design. Now that now it stopped. And do we have scissors anywhere? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to cut my thread because that's what we set it up in the, in our settings to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then we're going to push the check mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and then I'm going to go and continue to stitch out this design. <laughs> I tried to take the lid off the scissors with my teeth. <laughs> I had spit all over my head. <laughs> she got slobber on her. I'm <laughs> uh, so professional. Yes. <laughs> Now one of the things that I will tell you is that while your machine is stitching out a design, you never stand up and walk away from your machine. It goes way too fast for you to be able to catch something if something goes wrong. And things go wrong. You can, um, all of a sudden a bird's nest comes for no reason underneath where all the, the thread's not up. There's a lot of things that can go wrong. And so my advice to you is stay by your machine while, while it's stitching out. So you can't do hand work no. stitch on a different machine. Read, read a book. You, you can do things. But you'll find yourself getting mesmerized by watching this machine do the design. Yep. And this is just a simple quilting design. I mean, it designs can get quite elaborate. There's a tiger one that's really cool too that I would like to. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of things in the actual digitizing of, of a design um, that goes into it. You know, there's fill st stitches, there's laying stitches, how they, how they, how the background will be and, and um, satin stitches that they can digitize in. Digitizing is, and not all digitizing is the same. And that's why you have to really stitch out a sample, making sure that it's a good, digi that it has been properly digitized. Because I've done a lot of samples that they aren't. You know, you, you get, go in and get, there's a lot of free designs on the internet. Well, a lot of times what you get is a free design. So just, you know, just test it out first and see. Yep. There's uh, good, not good. good uh, need a good design. Uh, um, there is embroidery library that I've never gotten a bad design off of them. Yeah, a lot of a lot of good design companies out there that are good digitizers.
Well, and a lot of um, a lot of stitches, and there we are. A lot of designs. Our machine, we set it up to cut in between the the thread colors. Mm -hmm. But there are a lot of um, designs that they have not digitized that actually into their design, so it doesn't work. So it can't work. Yeah. Then. So here we are. I our personally like that jump stitch cutting thing. Yeah. <laughs> There is our design. Cool. And so we can just take that right off the hoop. Now the, the stabilizer that I have on the back of this is tear away. And so I can just go just like this. And tear that away. Now a design also will always look much better after once you press them. And a lot of times you can get, if you have some um, pulling on it, you can get that out just by pressing it. Mm -hmm. um, but if you've got a lot of pulling, that's a stabilizer issue and you, you probably needed to put another layer of stabilizer underneath there. Okay. So, okay. Cool beans, that was pretty easy. Bye-bye. Right. We'll show you some editing next time. Bye-bye.